Welcome back to Hungry for Adventure. On this adventure, we are actually doing a not so secret secret eat in Las Vegas. Um, we're gonna go to some places that are either low key or kind of hidden away, some fun spots that are harder to find. Um, and it's gonna be a variety of different places, some on the strip, and some of them are like different cuisines and types of food or drinks. So, come with us on this adventure. Uh, special shout out to our parents for watching her for some of these videos because some of them are 21 up. And we're excited to take you to spot number one. Let's go. So we're here at Mi Casa, or actually, Su Casa. We are here at Mi Casa to go to Su Casa. <laughs> it is a small little uh, Japanese Mexican fusion type restaurant within Mi Casa. So it's a little cute little hidden secret spot that you guys can come visit. Let's go try it out. Well, we're finished here at Tsukasa. It is, it was a lot of food. The portions were a lot bigger than I expected. And we finished it. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. We're working on this. <laughs> but the portions were a lot bigger than we expected and it was really good. So if you have a chance, you should come by and check this place out. On to spot number two. We're here at spot number two on our not so secret, secret eat list. This place is Capo's, and it is an Italian restaurant and bar, slash speakeasy. And it is actually off the strip, but it is, I guess, Chicago mobster themed. And as you can see in the front, there is no door, or there's a door, but it's not like a, an entrance door. So reservations are recommended unless you go at like kind of an off hour time. Um, and when you do call for your reservation, they will give you a password. So let's go find that door. No, just walk in. What you say? Capone? I didn't even ask you yet. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. Oh, I thought it was that door. How was it? <laughs> Good. So when we got in, I wasn't sure what the procedure was, and so I just gave them the password and they let me in. The door was not where I expected it to be for some reason. And then we got in, they seated us, and like the atmosphere and ambiance is really, really cool. Like, it's on theme, but not cheesy, you know? And like, there's like a nice bar area. And um, yeah, I, I'm excited to try the food. There's like, I think a piano for like performers sometimes too. So that would be really cool. And this is the cocktail we ordered. It is the mafioso mango martini. I'm not even sure what's in it. Lots of mango. Mango. Yeah. I'm not a martini aficionado, but let's try this. It's strong, but you get a really nice mango taste. It's really good. Let's actually start with the bread, which is warm. That's so nice. Oh, 
Ho ho ho. Mmm. Nice and warm. Which is always nice. Another thing, another thing to note is that they do have brunch, like Sinatra brunch on weekends. So right now I think they, they're not open for lunch on weekdays, but they do have brunch on weekends that you can check out. And it's pretty cool. They're, they have like TV screens in the restaurant and they like play like mafia movies. Oh my God, oh my God. The meatballs are here. It looks so good. It's super saucy. Perfect to dip my bread in. Wow. Mmm. You get like a nice pepper flavor. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. This is amazing. I don't know how well you can see, but the outside is kind of like nice and has like a nice uh, crust. Cr crust and the inside is tender mm. the meatball almost tastes like an italian sausage but i don't know if that makes sense oh wow that's really good and the peppers are really good mm. I'm a fan. It tastes like a sauce they would eat in a mafia movie. <laughs> Some gravy? Like, the sauce is good. <laughs> mm. I feel like I get a lot of like fennel, fennel seed flavor in here. It's really strong. It's not salty, but it's just very, very flavorful, even without the sauce. What do you think? I love it. Mm. I feel like, you know, you go to like really fancy Italian places or like quote unquote authentic Italian places. And this place is completely different. This is definitely American Italian, I wanna say. like. Like East Coast, like this is Chicago based, right? But like New York, Chicago type Italian mm -hmm. food is different from it's Italy Italian food. It's good like, in its own right though. Right? It's different. Like how pizza is different in Italy versus the US. I just feel like it's it's its own category almost. So I ordered the pasta fagiol, which it literally translates to like pasta and beans. So it's like a pasta soup with like pasta bits and bean bits so it should be good and then Kyle got his with the Italian egg drop soup so it literally has like egg drops like in like Chinese restaurants should taste good though let's try it oh that's tasty tastes almost like a chicken noodle soup almost but Italian but Italian this one is the pasta for you. Mm. I think I prefer the other one actually, but it's pretty good. I think the other one's more unique. I do like the little pasta bits in here and the bean bits, but I feel like it's a very heavy soup compared to the other soup. So Kyle ordered the veal parm. And I wanted to just dig into this one first because this cheese looks crazy. So I'm gonna just cut a piece and look at that cheese. Whoa. Wow, 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 wow. Mm. It's really good. I'll try, try a little bit of spaghetti left from the two. Mmm. Mmm. Spaghetti is actually surprisingly nice, nice and tart. I feel like it's similar to the spaghetti that I ordered. So. 
All right, and this is the spaghetti and meatballs. Wow. The noodles aren't quite like spaghetti. They look more, they look thicker for sure. Try this. Mm. The sauce is kind of like tart. Oh, you're welcome, sir. <laughs> it's very, um, it's savory, but it's like tart. Really good. I'm gonna try some of that house made Italian sausage. Let's see. It's really good. You can also taste like the fennel seeds in this one, too. I want to say it tastes kind of similar to the meatballs, but it has more of that sausagey, like saltiness. It's really tasty. Wow. Mm. I'm happy. Give me all the carbs. <laughs> While looking at, up this place, we found out that this place was featured on Bar Rescue. And that's where, um, what's his name, John Taffer or something, goes and tries to save these struggling bars. And so this place was actually featured on there, but I guess that entire season is focused on rescuing bars that suffered losses due to the pandemic. So it's not like they had like super negative like reviews before the bar rescue. So, I mean, the food's pretty good, so I wouldn't see why, why they wouldn't succeed. <laughs> We're done here at spot number two. We're gonna move on to spot number three, which is gonna be another speakeasy. Let's go. Number three on our, I guess, not so secret, secret eats place is uh, Ghost Donkey, which is a secret bar, kind of like a speakeasy, located at the Cosmopolitan. It's actually not too hard to find. It's at the Block 16 food court, which is behind me, and you just have to find like a green door with a white donkey. There are several other speakeasies in Las Vegas area, including the Underground at the Mob Museum and the Here Kitty Kitty speakeasy at Resorts World. So we didn't have the opportunity to go to those for this video, but you guys should check all of those out. Let's go. So we're here at the Ghost Donkey. It is a tequila and mezcal bar. It's uh, super hidden inside the Cosmo. And so they specialize in those types of drinks, both like shots as well as cocktails. Like uh, they have like ma margaritas and things like that too. And they also have food if you want to snack on it, something, but it's really cool. It's like a very cool vibe. There's like, it's really tight. There's, it's like pretty small, but it's a uh, very intimate. So it's a pretty cool place to check out. I'm gonna start with Kyle's drink. It is the Mezcal San Risa, and it has a mix of mezcal, some tequila, and it's supposed to have like a smoky, like spicy flavor profile with like some habanero. The smokiness is probably from the mezcal. Kind of burns down your throat, but like in a good way. It's, it's like just sweet enough, it's actually really good. You get like a bitter note too, there's like some orange, like bitter orange or something on it too. Not bad. This cute little drink is the Burro Tropical, as evidenced by our little burro, our little uh, donkey. <laughs> and uh, it's like a tropical drink. This one has some Tequila and passion fruit, lemon, ginger, and some soda. So it's kind of like a more tropical drink, hence the umbrella. 
Mm. The ginger works interestingly with like the inherent sweetness of like tequila. So it's really good. I like that it's in the little ginger cup. That just makes my day. <laughs> We just finished up at Ghost Donkey, so we're kind of hungry now, so we're gonna go look for some food. But Cosmopolitan, the hotel, actually has several secret spots, including Ghost Donkey, and then the next place we're going to, which is Secret Pizza, and there's a third one at Beauty and Essex, and it's like the front of the place is like a pawn shop, and there's a secret door you can go through, and it's like a secret restaurant. We won't be able to go there at this time, but that's just an FYI for you in the future. I'm hungry, let's go get some pizza. So we're at Secret Pizza, Secret Pizza. They're actually not even named. Secret Pizza is what, just what like people have started calling this place. And it's a hole in the wall um, pizza place and they do by the slice and it's like thin crust. And they also do whole, whole pizzas. We actually ordered a whole pizza so it's about a 20 minute wait right now. But they, you can also get just like a slice. It's uh, also open late so people come here, you know, after, you know, doing Vegas things and uh, get a slice or two to, you know, satisfy their drenches or something. But yeah, I'm excited to have some pizza. A few moments later. Thank you. Whoa. You can smell the garlic. Oh. Garlic goodness. Look at me, everyone's eating plates of pizza and here I, here I am looking like a pig with a whole pie. <laughs> oh my goodness, this looks so good. Okay. Is it worth $32? It's so hot. It's so good. Oh. It's really hot. I'm biased. I like fresh garlic on anything. The pepperoni is perfectly salty. Cheese is nice and gooey. Crust is thin. It's uh, not the thinnest crust I've seen, but it's so crunchy. I wish you could hear it. Oh my goodness. Mm. I'm gonna try to capture it with the mic. I'm busy. <laughs> mm. I think it's totally worth, <laughs> worth the money and the wait. So in the evenings, sometimes the line can get a little long. But I can understand why. You think it's worth it? Yep. So definitely check this place out. We're wrapped up here at spot number four. We're gonna move on to number five. Last but not least at number five is the Oyster Bar at Palace Station. It is one of our favorite places to eat. It is, um, we always like to come here and it's cool because it's open 24 hours. So you can really get it at any time of the day. It's a not so secret secret eat because there's a secret item menu that, a uh, secret menu item that I'm gonna order and it's uh, inside the palace station, which is off the strip. It's totally worth the trek. So you guys should come with us. Just a few things that you have to note about this place is that it's 21 up. So you can't come with kids. So that's one downside, I guess, for families. But, and then also the other thing is that there's always a line. Every single time I've come, no matter what time I've come, like 8 a.m., like 4 p.m., there's always a line. <laughs> so just be prepared to wait. It's almost been two hours, like an hour and 40 minutes. So it's a long wait today, for sure. But there's light at the end of the tunnel because we're almost there. So we just ordered our food. I ended up ordering their 
secret item menu, which is public now, but it's a bouillon roast. It's a combination of their bouillabaisse and their pan roast. The bouillabaisse is like a traditional shellfish stew with like some white fish. There's like, they use like king crab here, lobster, and like clam mussels. And the pan roast here is like a more of a tomato based, like cream based stew that uh, Kyle actually got a pan roast anyway. But um, the one that I ordered is like a combination, so it should be really good. And then here you can adjust the spice level, so I got like a seven, which is on the spicier side, but it should be manageable, <laughs> we'll see. Our food is finally here. So I got the booyah base or the booyah roast. So as you can see, it's like a little bit runnier than like the pan roast, but because it has like more of that like seafood broth in it. Mmm. It's so good and seafoody. I got it at level seven. It's pretty spicy, but like not too much that I can't manage. Look how ginormous these shrimps are. Mm. That's so good. That's cool too because like compared to the uh, regular pan roast, they give you like little pieces of king crab that are uh, legs that you'll have to dig out, but it's tasty. Let's go. Even the clams are big. Mmm. Let's try this. Get it with a side of rice, but like you could also ask for them to put it in there, in the, serve it to you in the broth. Or you could even get it with um, noodles. I know some people get it with like pasta noodles. So good. There's a reason why we wait hours for this. It's one of our favorite items here in Vegas. And we're so glad we got to finally show it to you. Crab. All right. This is the combo pan roast. It comes with shrimp and uh, crab, as well as lobster, right? And so here, as you can see, the la crab chunks are like smaller. They're not like leg pieces. They're like uh, almost like lump crab or like... So the nice thing is that it's all throughout but and it's super flavorful it's so tasty the shrimp are smaller than the ones in the booyah roast but there's lobster in here let's try some lobster mm. super tender if i were to compare this to something that you might be more familiar with it's like Maybe if you're familiar with Indian food, it reminds me of like a tikka masala curry type of thing where it's kind of thick. And there's a lot of spices. They use like the trinity vegetables, so like the celery and onions and bell peppers. You get a really nice uh, flavor from those. Mm. So even though it's called Usabar, this is what we order every time we come here. I would love to lie to you and say that I finished my food, but I did not. But they do give you to-go containers, so I'm gonna snack on this later. Um, overall, the food is amazing, fantastic. <laughs> um, just uh, be careful with the heat. I ordered seven, it was manageable, but it was uh, a little bit like, my nose is a little runny <laughs> from the spice, but it's uh, one of our place favorite places.
so you should come check it out. That does conclude our not so secret secret eats uh, food crawl in Las Vegas. We hope you enjoyed this video. There are a few places that we did not cover, but um, like there's a place called E by Jose Andres, for example, but it was like too ball in for us. But maybe in the future we can try it. Um, but thank you for joining us on this adventure. Uh, we hope you try some of the foods that we had because, you know, they're good. <laughs> but please give us a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next adventure. Thank you.